Hi, in this week's video, I'm gonna show you seven ways that Tesla beats the Audi e-tron. Let's get cracking. So one area where Audi does seem quite far behind Tesla is with their interface in, with the car, the way you communicate with the car, and also um, their kind of software updates, really. So Audi do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which are good systems. I mean, I had them previously on an X5 that I owned. Um, I, I kind of found them okay. I didn't find them that brilliant. In fact, they're a little bit of a distraction. So if you really want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it's not on the Tesla. I don't know if it ever will be. I kind of feel like it won't be. But let me show you what I mean with this interface. So you've got the binnacle display, which is very good. It's really nice and bright. You can have, um, go through a few things there and change the display a bit. So that's okay. This is a bit clunky. It's got haptic feedback, which is nice. Uh, but if I want to check the car, for instance, how charged it is, press that button and press that button. Uh, press that button. There we are. I've mistakenly charged it to 100% because I had a long journey the other day. So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of okay. It's not the most intuitive system. Um, you can change the um, regen to manual. It's probably not worth the effort. Um, it's kind of all right, really. I mean, it's not nothing, nothing amazing. If I want to change the suspension, I've had to come back out of that menu and I have to go into this menu, and it's just all right, really. And as you can see, every time I press it. I'll leave a fingerprint. And then you've got this one down here. So this kind of just does, mainly does the um, the air con and things. I mean, I, I kind of feel they might have been better off with one big screen rather than two small ones. And because it's so glossy, it does just get covered in fingerprints. Let's have a look at the Tesla and you'll see the difference and see what I mean. So the binnacle display on the Tesla is not quite as bright and the contrast isn't quite as good. However, it's very simple to use. So I can just click on the scroll wheel and change what, what, I'm, what I'm sort of looking at really. Um, and I like the fact that there's very few buttons here as well. Let's have a look at the other screen. So having this large screen is just really handy, especially for trips, if you're going away somewhere, so you've probably seen this in other videos, but I mean this, there's no point of that, but it does just make me laugh. And it is, you, you might not be able to hear this, but as I move around, it, it, oh, that was, that was one. It changes the speaker it's on as well. Uh, you can even do it on the indicator. So it's good fun, especially when someone first gets in the car. You've got a keyboard if you want to play, um, uh, play music in the car. You've got romance mode if you want to have a, have a fire on and some music playing. I mean, perhaps more useful though is the, um, the arcade. So this is really good when you're charging. Uh, we've got these controllers and the kids plug these in and they just play games. Um, you've also got Netflix, YouTube, whatever Twitch is and some tutorial videos. So the, the interface, the interfacing with the, the Tesla, it's just so much more fun than the Audi. I mean, this makes me smile. The Audi makes me look at it with a furrowed brow because I'm thinking, who's, who's kind of put this together? I mean, it's, it's all right, but the, the Tesla setup is brilliant. Tesla wins. The other big surprise for me with the e-tron was its lack of efficiency. So I, I'd kind of heard it wasn't that efficient. Well, so it is a big car, it weighs 2,400 kilos. So that is quite heavy. Um, but this is a £70,000 plus car, uh, it's Audi's flagship EV, it's not as efficient as the EQC or the I-Pace, but it's actually a bit worse than I thought it was going to be, let me show you. So here's the short term memory and as you can see here, in the, it, well it's done 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour, I mean that's low isn't it? and it's averaged 21 miles an hour. But I know what you're thinking, you've been thrashing this car, Steve, and I haven't. Let me show you this other screen. So in total, you see down here, the car's done 1,520 miles. So 
During that 1,520 miles, it's averaged 22 miles an hour. But in the lifetime of this car, it's only averaging 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. And that's just really surprisingly low. It's a bit like buying um, something like a 2005 4.8 litre Q7 and then uh, wondering why you know, it's not very efficient. I mean, by modern standards, this isn't an efficient EV. Let's have a look at the Tesla and we'll see all the differences. Okay, so with the efficiency, I, I actually managed, since filming that, you'll notice I'm wearing a different T-shirt. That was past Steve. This is present Steve. There's a Steve in between the two of us, if you're following this, who drove from here to Sleaford, to the Audi, from here to Sleaford, and then drove the Tesla from Sleaford back here, taking the same route on the same day, in the same conditions, and the same driving style. So the Audi actually performed pretty well compared to how it has been performing. It got 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's the best I've seen from the car. The temperatures seem to be perfect for the car. It was about 18 degrees. The Audi, the Tesla, however, on the journey back, and this was me, I actually put my foot down a bit in the Tesla and I managed to get down to one, one mile per kilowatt hour at one point. I was having a lot of fun. Over the course of the journey, uh, <laughs> I averaged 3.41 miles per kilowatt hour. So that is quite a big difference. That's just over 30% more miles per kilowatt hour in the Tesla than in the Audi. Now, after running a Tesla for just over a year, and I'm pro Tesla, as you can probably tell, the on and off button, why does this car have an on and off button? I don't, I don't really understand it. So you get in and you press the on button and the car springs to life. But bearing in mind, you've got in with the key. So the car knows that you're in the car. If you take the car out, take the key out of the car, if you even put out the window in your hand, it starts complaining that the car, the key is not in the car. So it knows. So why do you need an on and off button? I don't really get it. And the other thing I do quite often is I get in a car, I might do a little bit of filming or I might set something up I then go to drive away and it switched itself off again but nothing's changed in here everything looks the same on the dashboard but it's just not working and you get the message that says start the engine so you can drive away it hasn't got an engine I don't get it what's going on Audi let me show you how easy it is to drive away in the Tesla okay so I'm over here I'm away from the car and I'm gonna show you why not having a start-stop button is better. So I'm gonna come up to the car and you should hear the doors open. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm in the car. I've put the car into drive and we're off. So why, oh, seat belt steam. So, <laughs> so why do cars need start stop button when they know that the key is in the car well i hope you're enjoying this video if you are please consider subscribing to this channel it really helps and it really helps spread the word about evs um, and if you uh, haven't hit the like button already then please hit the like button thanks next is center console storage so when i'm driving uh, I like, or when I get out of the car, I like to kind of be able to hide things. I don't like anything on display. The center console uh, is a good place to put things, sunglasses, valuables, etc. But I don't want people to see them when they look in the window. Let's have a look. Now I'm going to take. This is scientific. I'm going to use cans of beer. So how many cans of beer can I discreetly put in the center console of the e-tron compared to the Tesla? Let's have a look. So one thing I don't quite get with the e-tron is this centre centre console. So it's kind of open. You can put your hands through there, or you can put your hand in there. I get that. That might be for a wire, but it's it's kind of really open. So you've got drinks holders here, which I won't talk about them now. 
But when you've kind of got a drink in, it's then quite hard to get it out, as you can probably imagine. But you can, it does. they do fold away to make a nice storage cubby. But other than that, anyone can see what's in, in here from outside. So let's try it with some beers. So we're going to start with the first middle class beer. There we are, Dead Pony Club. So that fits in there. You can only get one in there, I think. What have we got now? Clockwork Tangerine, another, another. So that, yeah, you can only get one in there. So that's that, and you can slide that over. So that can't be seen. You've only got this bit here. So let's pop one in there. Uh, can you get another one in there? Just, I'd say. Maybe if I wiggle that one a bit. There we are. Oh, they're well hidden. So I hope that demonstrates how kind of little out of sight storage there is in this centre console. Let's go and have a look in the Tesla. Right, so here's the centre console of the Tesla. Let's see what we've got here. We've got one. Now that's a really good alcohol free beer. If you fancy a beer on a Tuesday, I can recommend this. Uh, Estrella, EV Susie likes these, and I like these to be honest. What have we got in here? Another Estrella. Uh, one for the designated driver there. What have we got? This is a new one. This is a plunged orange. I've not seen this one before. I don't know what that tastes like. Uh, and a brew dog punk hype. I've gone off them. They used to be a lot better. If you used to drink these and they and you still drink them, let me know what you think. They used to be a lot nicer, I think. Um, Got a, a Lost Lager, I recommend that one. Um, what we've got here, we've got a Twisted Knots American IPA, that sounds nice. Another Punk IPA. Um, what have we got there, another Twisted Knot. I think that's it, well that's not quite it. We've got a Session IPA, oh, that's another Dead Pony. Uh, let's have a look, there's a little secret bit down there. That's, uh, Another punk IPA, and then I think that's all of them. Unfortunately, I was hoping to be able to fit one in there, but it just won't shut, which is a shame. Let's have a little count up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So compared to the Audi's three, I have scientifically concluded and proved that the Tesla has four times the private center console storage as the e-tron four times next is actual driving fun the actual driving experience so the the audi is very smooth it's very very quiet it's actually much quieter than the tesla the soundproofing in the audi is amazing and the wipers this is for another video this is for how the audi beats the tesla the wipers, you can't even hear them. The ones on the Tesla are a clunky mess. But anyway, it's just not much fun to drive. It's a little bit corporate, it's not that interesting. I mean, from BMWs, BMWs are perhaps more engaging to drive than Teslas, but Teslas are fun to drive. And on the whole, with all the other things we've talked about, it's a fun place to be, another win for Tesla. Okay, next is the charging infrastructure. So. And I mean, I kind of felt it was a little bit unfair to include this, but then I thought to myself, well, it is probably <laughs> the most significant way that the Tesla beats the Audi. Let me explain what I mean. So Tesla have their own charging network. And before I start talking about that, I'm going to talk to you about my experience about charging the Audi. So recently we were in Thornham in Norfolk. If you've watched any of my videos, you won't be surprised by that. And we were coming home. So, well, in Thornham, there are seven destination chargers that I normally use with the Tesla. So these are Tesla destination chargers. Out of these seven, three can be used with any car. So I had the choice of three uh, chargers to use. Um, all fairly high powered for destination charges, either 11 or 16 kilowatts an hour. So, so really good charging. They were all down. So these other charges, these Tesla charges that are open to other cars, none of them were working. So 
I decided to charge in Kings Lynn on the way home. So I went to the central car park in Kings Lynn. There was three charges there. I got on straight away and started charging. Um, the other two chargers weren't working. So I was two, there's a leaf, two leaf owners either side of me, both having problems. So one person I spoke to, really nice guy, um, his leaf kept cutting out. And then the other leaf owner, who was also a very nice guy, <laughs> his charger just wouldn't work. And I'm sitting in this like 70,000 plus, thousand pound plus car, but I'm getting about 45 kilowatts. And that's, that's fine, uh, I guess. This car, the, so the e-tron is capable of up to 150 kilowatts or 120 kilowatts. So I guess my point is that those charging speeds are actually really hard to find in the UK. The vast majority of chargers in the UK are still 50 kilowatts. And that will change and that is changing. So if you've got an e-tron or you're thinking of getting an e-tron, just learn where the fast chargers are because otherwise it will be slow. Let's compare that to the Tesla. So I've just decided sitting here, um, I wanna to go to Paris. So what the Tesla's telling me to do is to drive to the Dartford supercharger and it's telling me that there are five stalls there and all five are available and that I'm going to be getting up to 130 kilowatts. But importantly, I can see which stalls are available before I even get there. Uh, and if, for instance, it's full, um, I'll just get dire dire directed sorry, to another charger. Um, the next stop it's telling me is here. And it's saying there, there's 10 stalls available uh, out of 10, and I'll be getting up to 150 kilowatts of charge on that charger. Having the ability to just put where you're going in the car and the car to tell you where all the charging stops are and how long you're gonna be there before you even charge, uh, because it knows you're going there, it will precondition the batteries to accept the fastest charge it can. I mean, this is a big win for Tesla. And the last thing I want to talk about is regen. And this kind of goes back or goes hand in hand, hand with the efficiency I was talking about earlier. So if you're doing 70 miles an hour in the Audi and you take your foot off the accelerator, it will just, it will just coast. So it's a bit like um, when you drive on a motorway in a and you just put a car into neutral. You're just kind of coasting. It's a slightly odd feeling. So I, I don't know whether Audi think that coasting is better than regen. I mean, mate, I don't know. I, I, I can't see what they're what they're trying to kind of achieve with that but maybe they think coast is better than regen because the audi has got very little regen uh, you can mess about with it manually but it's just not worth the effort and it's still not very good whereas the tesla you can set the regen on two levels actually we've also got a volkswagen e-golf and in the volkswagen e-golf you can set the regen up to four different levels Anyway, but this isn't about that. So with a Tesla, you can have low or high regen, and it's essentially one foot driving. And then there's a display on the dashboard and it shows you your usage. And then when you stop and take your foot off the accelerator, it shows you how much uh, of, of the, um, the, the, the energy is coming back into the battery from the regenerative braking of the car another win for Tesla. Well, that's the end. Let me know what you think. Uh, the comment section below. <laughs> I know it can get a bit heated, especially from the Audi drivers, but there is another video, which is the ways that the Audi beats the Tesla. So please don't, please don't have a go at me too much. Uh, I'm keen to know your thoughts as always. I'll put some more videos around me and until next time, see you soon.